In this lesson, we'll look at how to solve linear inequalities. This is almost exactly like solving a linear equation, but there is one important difference, and that is if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality symbol. That's because the numbers that are less than zero, um, the, the val absolute value gets larger while the value of the number actually gets smaller. So they're in kind of opposite order than what you think. So it's important to reverse the inequality symbol. And you may have to express the answer in a graph and or interval notation and or set builder notation. So be prepared to be asked for any of those. And here's our first example. 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 11. So just like an equation, the first thing to do is to get rid of the 3. So we'll show minus 3 on both sides. And that leaves us with negative 2x is less than or equal to 8. And now I want to get rid of this negative 2 coefficient. So if I divide both sides by negative 2, it's going to force me to flip over my inequality symbol. So I'm going to end up with x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now in set builder notation, I just put the curly braces in the x around my, my actual inequality. Um, but in, in a graph, I put the number line on the, I put negative 4 in the number line, and I shade to the right of negative 4. And I have a bracket here because of the or equal 2 bar. Now the interval notation will be from negative 4 to infinity. And let's solve another one. Negative 2x minus 4 is greater than x plus 5. So you have a choice here. You can actually uh, add 2x to both sides or you could subtract x from both sides. And I'm going to choose to add 2x to both sides. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll end up with a positive x over here if I eliminate my smaller x term. So it's a little bit of a drag to have the x on the right, but if I want to at the end, I can just switch the inequality around so that the x is on the left. So it's really not a problem. So now I have negative 4 is greater than 3x plus 5. So let's subtract 5 from both sides, and that will give us negative 9 is greater than 3x. Divide both sides by positive 3. Now, because I've divided both sides by a positive, there's no need to switch the inequality symbol. And I get negative 3 is greater than x. But now, in order to really graph it most easily, I really would like to have my x on the left. So in, instead of saying it as negative 3 is greater than x, I'll switch it around and say that x is less than negative 3. Notice it still really means the same thing. Here it says, here, you know, my x is smaller. Remember the alligator's mouth eats the bigger number? Well, here x is smaller, so the little end is pointing to the x. And here, in this one, x is smaller because the little end is pointing to the x. And the alligator's mouth is eating negative 3 in both ones. So this says the same thing, but it just says it with the x first, and I like that because now when I graph, it's easy to know where the, uh, where the shading should go. All the numbers that are less than negative 3 are to the left of negative 3, and I have my parenthesis here, and of course our interval will be from negative infinity to negative 3. Now I'm going to check one of these with you. And the way you check an inequality is you have to check two things. The first thing is you have to check whether you got the correct number, and then you have to check whether you shaded in the correct direction. To check the number, you just plug it in and check it as exactly like it was an equation. And to check the shading, you plug in any number in the shaded area and then verify that the inequality comes out true. So we've already worked this problem 
and we already got the solution of x is less than negative 3, but now let's check it. So if I want to see if negative 3 is correct, what I'll do is I'll plug negative 3 into both sides and add it up. See, negative 2 times negative 3 will be positive 6, and negative 3 plus 5 will be 2, so 6 minus 4 is 2. That's true, so I know that negative 3 is the correct number. Now I have to decide if the shading is going the right way. So I can pick any number that's in the shaded part, and I happen to pick negative 10, I believe. And so here it is with negative 10 plugged in. All I want to do is make sure that when I work it out that it really is true. So negative 2 times negative 10 is 20. And uh, 20 minus 4 is, says is greater than negative 5. So, you know, these are not going to be equal because this is an inequality. So the left side came out 16. And 16 certainly is bigger than negative 5, so that tells me that my shading is correct. So when you check the number, both sides should match. But when you check something in the shaded area, the two sides are not going to match, but your inequality should be true. Okay, now here's one with a fraction. So let's uh, find our common denominator, which is 12. And let's uh, multiply everything by 12. So 12 over 4 makes 3. This one will simplify to 3 times x plus 3. 12 over 4 here also makes, or sorry, 12 over 3 makes 4. And here 12 over 4 makes 3 again. Now distribute your 3 and distribute your 4. And now I have some terms on the right side that could be combined. Negative 8 plus 3 makes negative 5, and now I have to solve. I have both kinds of terms on both sides of the equal mark, so I'm going to do minus 3x on both sides, and then plus 5 on both sides, and that gives me 14 is greater than or equal to x. If I turn it around so that x is on the left, it will say x is less than or equal to 14. Again, notice I didn't really flip the inequality symbol because it's still pointing toward the x. I just restated my uh, statement in a different order. So now to put it in set builder notation, we just put the curly braces around it. Uh, to shade the numbers that are less than 14, I will shade to the left. We'll use a bracket because of the or equal to bar. And then our interval is from negative infinity to 14. Now let's look at some unusual solution sets. If you solve an inequality and the variable terms cancel out, it means that the solution is either all real numbers or no solution at all. We're going to look at an example of each. So let's solve 2 times x plus 4 is greater than 2x plus 3. If you distribute and subtract 2x from both sides, you're left with no variables. And so if you have 8 is greater than 3, well, that's a true statement. That means that every x you could think of will check in this um, original inequality, and that means that the solution is the set of all x's such that x is a real number. Now, the graph, if you had to graph it, would be the entire number line because we need to shade all the numbers. And the interval notation would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we look at this inequality and do our distribution and combine our like terms, 3x plus 2x is 5x, and negative 24 
minus 20 is negative 44. Now when we subtract 5x from both sides, the inequality we get is actually not true this time. This is false. That tells me that there are no x's that can be plugged in up here that will make the inequality true. So there's no solution. And that means the graph would be empty. And if the graph is empty, there's no interval. And in set notation, we would have this empty set symbol. The zero with a line through it stands for empty set. And it just means that there is no solution.